the love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Spirit of God dwelling within us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins that we may worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who have taught the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant that in the same spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation. Through our Lord, Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if only you would put up with a little foolishness from me. Please put up with me. For I am jealous of you with the jealousy of God, since I betrothed you to the one husband to present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his cunning, your thoughts may be corrupted from a sincere and pure commitment to Christ. For if someone comes and preaches another Jesus than the one we preached, or if you receive a different spirit from the one you received, or a different gospel from the one you accepted, you put up with it well enough. For I think that I am not in any way inferior to these super apostles. Even if I am untrained in speaking, I am not so in knowledge. In every way we have made this plain to you in all things. Did I make a mistake when I humbled myself so that you might be exalted because I preached the gospel of God to you without charge? I plundered other churches by accepting from them in order to minister to you. And when I was with you and in need, I did not burden anyone, for the brothers who came from Macedonia supplied my needs. So I refrained and will refrain from burdening you in any way. By the truth of Christ in me, this boast of mine shall not be silenced in the regions of Achaia. And why? Because I do not love you? God knows I do. The word of the Lord. Your works, O Lord, are justice and truth. I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart in the company of the and assembly of the just. Great are the works of the Lord, exquisite in all their delights. Majesty and glory are his work, and his justice endures forever. He has won renown for his wondrous deeds. Gracious and merciful is the Lord. The works of his hands are faithful and just. Sure are all his precepts, reliable forever and ever, wrought in truth and equity. Received 
the spirit of adoption as sons, through which we cry out, Abba, Father. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples in praying, do not babble like the pagans who think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. Your father knows what you need before you ask him. This is how you are to pray. Our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. If you forgive others their transgressions, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your transgressions. The Gospel of the Lord. I was listening to that first line there from the Paul's letter to the Corinthians, and I should have said this line when I first got here to St. James. Uh, Please put up with me. If only you would be put up with me, a little foolishness from me, right? Anyone who knows me, you put up a lot of foolishness with me. Today's gospel, we have the gifting of that beautiful prayer of our Lord Jesus Christ of the Our Father. And the Our Father prayer sits right in the middle on the Sermon of the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount begins with the Beatitudes in chapter 5 of Matthew's Gospel, continues to chapter 6 and ends at the end of chapter 7. And right there in the middle, chapter 6, verse 10, we begin with the beautiful gifting of that prayer of the Our Father. It is the prayer that our Lord Jesus Christ taught us to pray. He says, this is how you are to pray, which is why we pray it at every Mass. Why it's there in the Rosary. As religious who pray the divine office, we pray it in the morning prayer and we pray it at evening prayer. So every priest and religious, if they're going to daily mass, which I presume they are, they are praying the Our Father three times a day because it is the prayer that Jesus gave us. And it's really good for us to break down that prayer and then to really make it our own. One of the most difficult things to do as a priest is to take the prayers that are in the book of what's called the Roman Missal, the one on the altar, is to take those prayers that were written by others many centuries ago, translated from Latin to English, and to make them my own. When I pray those prayers of the Mass, those prayers need to become my prayers because I'm entering into the life of the church, and so I have to insert myself into the very life of the church, and those prayers need to be prayed with sincerity from my own heart. And so as I pray the prayers of the Mass, I'm not just reading from the book, I'm trying to bring them into my heart so I can express those prayers to the Father on your behalf. That's the role of the priest, to intercede with the Father on your behalf. And so it is with each and every one of us, with the beauty of the Our Father prayer, is to take those words that Jesus gave us and really make them our own. So we pray them, we're praying them from our heart. In order to do that, we need to spend time with that prayer. Whether it just be with one sentence at a time, or sections of it, or perhaps even one word at a time. Just think of the first words. When Jesus says, when you pray, say, our, our, it's an important word, our. Why is it important to us? Because it says that we are all children of the Father. I remember when I was um, at uh, West Catholic High School in Philadelphia, 
and I had Dr. Alveda King come in to speak to the young people there and she spoke about how the pro-life movement is the new civil rights movement because the unborn are deprived of their right to life and so forth. So Dr. Martin Luther King's niece is a very strong pro-lifer. And the kids asked about the civil rights movement. And she said, well, the civil rights movement was never about being black. She said, the civil rights movement was about us all being children of the same father. And we come in all kinds of shapes, colors, and sizes. And she reflected on that beautiful word of the R O Father. We come in all kinds of shapes, colors, and sizes as children of the same father. Kind of funny, the kids asked what happened to the civil rights movement, and she said, they stopped being Christians and started being Democrats. That was her words. <laughs> that it was never a political movement, it was a spiritual movement, the civil rights movement of recognizing each other as brothers and sisters and children of the same father. When we say that word our, we're claiming our place as children of the father, but also claiming each other as brothers and sisters of the one true family of God. And as part of that hour, there's another person in that hour when we say our father. And that other person in the hour is Jesus Christ himself. When we say our Father, we're making a claim to who we are to Jesus Christ. We're recognizing Jesus as our older brother, as he recognizes himself as our brother when he says, when you pray, say, our Father. He doesn't say, when you pray, say, Jesus' Father. He says, when you pray, say, our Father. Your Father or my Father. Remember, I said the other day, 15 times, Jesus says on the Sermon on the Mount, your heavenly Father, your heavenly Father, your heavenly Father. 15 times, your heavenly Father. He says it over and over again. And then when he says, when you pray, say, our Father. Your Father and mine, I'm your brother. How beautiful Jesus makes his claim of unity with us. You know, before and during Mass, before the priest leads the Our Father, he says, Instructed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father. We dare to call the creator of heaven and earth, Father. We dare to call the one who is, who was, who always shall be, the one from whom God the Son proceeds, we dare to call him Father. We dare to call the one who could grant us heaven or cast into hell, the great judge of the universe, we dare to call him Father. We dare to. Why? Because it's true. We dare to call him Father because we have been baptized into Christ Jesus. We have been adopted by the Father. We have been given the gift of the Spirit who allows us to cry out to him, Father, Abba. Better translated, Dada. A baby word as he draws us into this beautiful relationship with him, with himself. We dare to call him Father. I often mention how in Muslim countries, if you call God Father, you will be beheaded. To them, he is never Abba Father. He is Allah Master. I was once having a conversation with a Muslim and I kept calling God Father and he was getting really, 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 really angry with me. I thought he was gonna come after me and dive over the counter at the Dunkin' Donuts and come after me. And I said, you're offended, I keep calling God Father, aren't you? He goes, yes, he's Allah, he's not Abba. I said, see, you're still in prison. You still are a slave. But through the waters of baptism, you could become a son. And through the gifting of the waters of baptism, you can be freed from that slavery and come to know God as Abba, Father, because he loves you. And he wants that for you. At that point, he was either going to kill me or convert. I wasn't sure. <laughs> we shook hands, and I think I left him with a lot of th to chew on. But that beautiful Father, that word. As we approach Father's Day this week, and to think about that word Father. Some of us had poor experiences of Father. Some of us had good experiences of Father. But we all know what Father should be. And that image of Father in us of what either our fathers lived up to or didn't live up to or struggled to live up to, that image we have is the image of God that's already on our hearts. 
So the perfection of fatherhood is who God the Father is. And that beautiful, hallowed be thy name, this is the second commandment. Not to use the Lord our God's name in vain, but here we hallow his name, we call it holy. This beautiful name of God, his holiness. That's the first petition of the Our Father, seven petitions. The first petition of the Our Father is we ask that his name be hallowed, his name be made holy. And that's a mission for us too, particularly in this world where our Lord's name is not used in holiness. Sometimes we're the ones not using it in holiness. Mm, have mercy, Lord. <laughs> but to truly make his name holy, to reverence the beauty of his name, even the name of Jesus, the name of his son, such a powerful name. Those of you there with the blessing of items last Saturday, you saw how often in blessing the holy water, I called on the name of Jesus. The power of that name that makes heaven rejoice and hell shake. There's power in the name of God. The prayer goes on, thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come. I often laugh sometimes at these movies that make Christians so afraid of the second coming. Ooh, we're afraid, oh no, the end of the world is coming. <laughs> We pray for the end of the world every time we say to you, Our Father, thy kingdom come. Come, Lord Jesus, just as it says at the end of the book of Revelation. Come, Lord Jesus, thy kingdom come. We want the Lord to establish his kingdom. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Whether the kingdom comes in the second kingdom or the kingdom comes by me going to the Lord, I want that kingdom to come and I want to be in that kingdom. Thy kingdom come, the second petition of the our Father prayer. The kingdom of God is a beautiful thing because the kingdom of God is a kingdom of justice, a kingdom of peace, a kingdom of love, a kingdom where God reigns as king. We pray that the Lord's will be done on earth as the Son in heaven. The third petition of the Our Father prayer. Thy will be done, Lord. Remember that old song, uh, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Remember this big coochie song we used to sing? Well, <laughs> Thy kingdom, thy will be done, Lord, on earth as it is in heaven. Well, let it begin with me. We just don't want God's will to be done on earth in a generic way. We need to be doing the will of God each and every day of our lives. And sometimes the will of God is painful. It is difficult. As uh, someone once said to me, if only God would do my will, we'd get along just great. But that's not the prayer. The prayer isn't, God, do my will, as it's done on earth. The prayer is, thy will be done, Lord, on earth, as it is in heaven. To do the will of God in our lives. To follow that prompting of the Holy Spirit to live in holiness of life. We pray, give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. Now, this could mean the regular things in our lives that we need, but ultimately, what it really and truly means is the Holy Eucharist. Is there any greater bread than the bread from heaven? Is there any greater bread than Jesus Christ in the Holy Eucharist? Is there anything greater we can receive each and every day than our Lord Jesus Christ? Daily, we have that opportunity. Most of us can do that. We pray that our priests will have the grace to want to celebrate the daily mass to feed his children. That's why we call priest father. That the father may feed his children daily with the super substantial bread of the most holy Eucharist. That his children might be nourished with the gift of the holy Eucharist. That they may be filled by the gift of the grace of the gifting of the holy Eucharist. That each and every one of us, whenever we can get to mass, God willing, we can get there daily and we can receive that daily bread of the Eucharist to receive him in his true and real abiding presence and allow him to remain with us, to unite us to him and to allow that relationship to deepen. Each day we receive him the gift of the Eucharist. Forgive us our trespasses, and I hate the second part of the sentence, as we forgive those who trespass against us. <laughs> Why can't it be forgive me the way you forgive? The Lord said, no Lord, forgive me the way I forgive. Oh! He really puts that in there, doesn't he? He has to drive it in there to, for us to forgive others. We're praying that the Lord will forgive us the way we forgive, so we better forgive if we want the God to forgive us, right? The Lord puts that right in there just to kind of, mm, ah, ouch. <laughs> that little word, as, 
powerful word. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive. Youch, Lord. Okay. <laughs> we ask for that forgiveness of God, but we're also asking for the grace to forgive others as well when we pray the Our Father. And lead us not into temptation. Now, God is not going to lead us into temptation. We're not praying that he doesn't lead us into temptation in the sense that God's leading us there. No, Lord, don't do that, God. No. He's like, you know, Lord, lead us not into temptation. Lord, direct me away from temptation, Lord. Don't let me go anywhere near that stuff, Lord. Lead me not into it. Lead me into your grace, into your holiness, into your goodness, into your kindness. Lead me into virtue. Lead me into holiness, Lord. Don't let me follow my own foolishness into, into temptation. And then finally, deliver us from evil. And how we need to pray that in today's day and age where we feel like we're surrounded by so much evil through the Lord to deliver us from that evil that surrounds us in our day and age. I didn't expect to go this long as I'm looking at the clock here on the, on the, on the camera. But I want you to do a little thing tonight, if you can, or maybe this week, a little homework from this homily. Take the Our Father prayer. Take it, write it down. And then compose a prayer based upon the Our Father. Take each sentence from the Our Father and add to it. Put your own words in there and express your own heart with each of the words. It'll help you embrace the Our Father deeply. For example, Our Father, you who are my father, you are so good to me, Father. I've been adopted by you. You truly love me as a father. Let me truly be your son, Lord. You who are in heaven, let me be in heaven with you. I want to be with you in heaven, Lord. Give me that grace to make it to heaven. Thy kingdom come, Lord. Establish your kingdom in my heart. Be the king of my heart, Lord. Thy will be done, O oh Lord. Let me do your will on earth the way you want me to do it. Let me never do anything but what you will for me, Lord. Give me this day my daily bread. Give me the Holy Eucharist. May I be able to receive you this day. And if I can't be spiritually with me. Forgive me my trespasses, Lord. All of my sins, all those failings, those stupid things I did, Lord. And let me forgive those who hurt me, Lord. Because they're nothing in comparison to the way I've hurt you. Don't lead me to temptation, Lord. Let, don't let me fall into my own foolishness this day. And Lord, get rid of that stupid evil around me. <laughs> that I may live always surrounded by your grace. Something like that. Take whatever time you need with it. Take the Our Father. Build around it. Build around those words. Meditate on those words. Allow it to expand. The saints did this. St. Teresa of Avila, St. Francis of Assisi. The saints took the Our Father and they allowed it to expand outward into one's personal experience. So you can grab that prayer that Jesus gave us, bring it into the heart, and express it from the heart. So we're not just babbling like the pagans. That it's coming from the depth of the heart. Well, anyway, that is a long homily. <laughs> Today, as we reflect upon the beautiful words of the Our Father, prepare to say it at Mass. May these words truly be words that come not just off of our lips, words that are not just there in our memory, but words that really are there that sit upon our heart, that we express them from the depth of our being to our Father in heaven, who loves us so much. May God bless you and Mary keep you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed 
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctify, we pray, O oh Lord, the offerings made here, and cleanse our hearts by the light of the Holy Spirit, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, ascending above all the heavens and sitting at your right hand, he poured out the promised Holy Spirit on your adopted children. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the host of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. The font of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, 
spread throughout the world. And bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Benedict our Pope Emeritus, Robert our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously, grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Confirm, O God, what you have brought about in us from your holy temple, which is in Jerusalem. Let us pray. May the outpouring of the Holy Spirit cleanse our hearts, O Lord, and make them fruitful by the inner sprinkling of this dew. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. After I finished preaching in part of Mass, I was thinking about the pandemic and how all these churches across the world were shut down for fear of death. And the bread of life was withheld from so many of you during those times of the pandemic. And I, as a priest, we didn't, I don't think I appreciated as much the pain of your heart because I could just go to my mass, my chapel and say mass every day. And um, how painful it must have been to pray that prayer of the Our Father, give us this day our daily bread and to have it withheld, how painful. What a beautiful gift now that the pandemic is lifted and we can attend mass each day or not just on Sundays, but even more if we're free to, if the time mass times work for us, we're able to go out, go to it. What a beautiful grace to be able to contend Holy Mass each day, to receive the bread of life every day, especially after the pandemic of being deprived from our Lord, with, deprived of our Lord for so long. Those powerful words of give us this day our daily bread. You know, and as you pray that prayer in the Our Father, think also of our priest, that they truly have the desire and the thirst to celebrate Mass every day, that God will call men to serve at the altar and to be holy priests who will offer the bread of life to souls and the holy sacrifice of the Mass. Pray that the young men called forward to truly be able to fulfill the prayer of every person, to give them each day their daily bread, which is Christ himself. Just coming to mind as I was praying the Mass and just thinking, as I'm going through the Mass, my ADD brain going all over the place and just that one thought of just the reality of give us this day our daily bread and how for those months during the pandemic and even in some places churches are still closed. People were not able to receive the Holy Eucharist, receive that daily bread. They weren't able, that's just Sundays, but each day. So thanks be to God that we can hear and pray that that continues that each and every day we can receive our Lord in the Holy Eucharist. And, Whenever you're able to make it to daily Mass outside of the regular Sunday, do so. Uh, there's nothing greater to receive than Jesus himself. So. These are my post-communion wandering thoughts. I apologize. So, after all, I have a few more days left to give you to them. So, <laughs> after that, you're going to find me on YouTube. So, but uh, certainly have a beautiful, beautiful, blessed evening. And um, we'll see you very, all very soon. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast to hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.